Radio. Welcome to another exciting episode of Coffee and Radio. We are live from LA Comic Con 2022, and I'm with illustrator, animation expert extraordinaire, Bill Cop. Bill, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Thank you. Dude, it's so cool to just be in your presence talking and all the things you've done. You've had people at your uh, table all day, nonstop. Um, it's hard to get a word in edgewise with you, so thank you so much for taking time out of your day. My pleasure. I'm glad to do it. Dude, you've done everything under the sun from Simpsons, a pup named Scooby-Doo, Tasmania, Eat now, wait a minute, pup named Scooby-Doo, where'd you get that from? Were you not a storyboard artist? No, I didn't work on a Scooby-Doo. At all? That's probably from IMDb. Anything you read on the internet is true. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> no, that's the one that, that you missed out on. But yeah, the other stuff is all true. Eat the Cat, uh, you did some Tom and Jerry? You did a lot? I did two Tom and Jerry movies. I did uh, Blast Off to Mars and Fast and Furry. But you're actually here for something else. You got the Dumb Bunny and Jackass show, That's right. right. We have a very new... The very weird Dumb Bunny and Jackass show, which we're just starting. We've got four cartoons made, and we just had a little premiere this morning. Went really well. All ten people showed up, <laughs> and uh, you know we're just starting out with a new thing, so it's a little bit tricky to promote. But thank you for helping us out with that, dude. I mean, it deserves some recognition. You got a lot. I mean, I think it's cool. A, a lot of it. I mean, think how think how fun that is. You know what I mean? So it's something you really want to check out. You got all the fun stuff. I'm super excited, but you've done so much in your career. I was super stoked when I found out that you did the whammy for yes. um, Pass Your Luck. Yeah. And I think that's so iconic. That's Americana, man. And, and that was like before digital animation, anything. So we were just drawing that on a thing called the Quantel paint box. <laughs> so it's very crude. That's why it looks so like bizarre. But people love it. They, it's an underground hit. I think it's iconic. People see that and they know yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah, and they still show that show. That's what I'm saying, bro. Iconic. So cool. And I mean, from there, you, you just hop on to another thing, the Tracy Ullman show, and do some Simpsons shorts. Yeah. Why not, you know? What are your memories from that era? I mean, Matt Green. Well, that was, I mean, of course, nobody knew what it was going to turn into, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was, we were just like, we came off of One Crazy Summer, so we did Better Off Dead, One Crazy Summer. And then we were suddenly out of work for a minute. <laughs> and then Wes Archer was the guy that got a hold of with Gabor Chupo. And then we all were big fans of Matt Groening, so we decided to uh, join forces on this little show called The Simpsons. It's probably never going to go anywhere. And this is crazy. People don't realize it. This is, before there was The Simpsons, it was a short on a different television show. It wasn't this 30 long year career that it's had now. So. Oh no. And for it to be so different and off the wall and you to be a part of it at the ground level is so cool. Man. Yeah. That's historic. Yeah. You don't do a pup named Scooby-Doo, obviously, but... Yeah, I don't know where that came from. You do do, you know, you do start that relationship with Fox, though, when you do Tasmania. Yes. Um, a crazy show. You're a writer on that. How weird, how different was it writing for a show where the lead character does not talk? Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> because I had come off the Roger Rabbit short. Did you do the dialogue? Uh, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> yeah. I think it was Frank Welker. Um... But I had gone on to Tasmania after working on the Roger Rabbit shorts at Disney. So that kind of got us used to writing for action. Yeah. Where characters, where dialogue is not the key component. So that sort of taught me a lot about story. And then going into Tasmania was like, there is a lot of story going on there. But they wanted me to direct, but I wanted to write because that's where all the guys were, who were in control of the project were the writers. And that, if I hadn't made that decision to write, we never would have had Eat the Cat or Mad Jack or or Transylvania yeah. or any of the other or Snookers of Meat. Yeah. None of it. And you bring up Eat the Cat, <coughs> a huge one for your career. I would imagine your baby, your pet project, you know, that was so amazing. What was that like? I mean, you did the voice, you're the, the creator, you know, how did that work out for you? Well, and I was working with like my really best buddy at the time, Savage, you know, so we were just like two guys that like, formulated this thing. He had done some work for Fox and I had done a couple of shorts for The Late Show. And um, so we had a connection there. Oh no. Oh. oh dear. I'll get that edited. Oh dear. That's okay. okay. No, leave it in. Let me see. Hold on. I'll edit it. Don't Where? worry about it. This will be out. Where? Oh no, that's... Like he was like standing here for a 
Yeah. That's Kirk Wise, I think. Oh, okay. Anywho. There you go. That's all right. I think you just leave some of that in there. For yeah, the we'll have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can't remember what we're talking about. Uh, you had just uh, Tasmania, or sorry, Eat the Cat. You yeah. had the working relationship with Fox now. Yeah, so that kind of led to, well, that was funny because we got Eat going and we did, we're in the second season and then I got a call from Disney to an offer to come make a show for them, which I did. And that was sugar for me. So I was still on Eat. But Iconic I was, show. Yeah, but I was doing sugar for me and then that led to piss and text and all that stuff. Yeah. So it was a little weird doing two shows at once, but I got used to it. Yeah. Yeah, different, man. That iconic, uh, you know, Fox really cornered the market in that early cartoon, bringing that back in the early 90s, you know? Yeah. And so you a part of it is so cool. That's so, that's Well, they, they were making good cartoons. They looked good. They, they didn't look like TV shit. Exactly. You know? Storylines. Yeah. Fun stuff. Well, and really better cool. drawing. Yeah. And from there, you know, you have some other things. Did you work on Danny Phantom? Um, Not that no. either? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Mighty Magic Sword, though. That was you. I, I, I was the voice of... Uh, Fishman the man fish. Okay. And he was a French and uh, yeah. you know, he would uh, talk like this very arrogant uh, but a very insecure character. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah, and that's Kyle uh, Carosa is like a great buddy. Some fun stuff. And I mean, you're a part of another iconic, iconic thing when you work for Tom, or when you do the voice of Tom and Jerry. You know, you were to, uh, Tom's voice. Yeah, I basically just screamed yeah, for yeah, Tom. Yeah. 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 yeah, I tried to get that Joe, or the Bill uh, Hanna. Hard shoes to but, uh, fill. Yeah. That's crazy. You know, that's a definitely a but big part. But the screaming part. was all I did there. And then, <laughs> uh, and then sang crazy. Yeah. Well, how'd you come up with the idea for, you know, as you move forward, uh, how'd you get the idea for Weird Dumb Buddy and Jackass show? Well, they've been around for a while. They were just two idiot characters that have had the hardest time over the past 15 years trying to find their way into creation. And I think that what happened was, uh, you know, we got so tired of the development process. It's so hard to sell a TV show these days that it came time to, like, how can I do this myself? So I learned the uh, character animator from Adobe, and it miraculously puts all of the control of production into the hands of the animator, <laughs> so I can make little films. So they're great characters. I've always loved them. I always knew they were good, and uh, we're just getting started with them. Like I said, it hasn't even been a year yet, but uh, I'm sticking with these guys, yeah, and uh, we're going to make it swing. This one's definitely going to work. I got a feeling about this one for well, sure. I'm with From you. your lips to God's ears. <laughs> well, where can people follow you on social media so they can keep up with everything? Well, you can go to Bill Cop Animation. You can get me on Instagram at Bill Cop Funny. Um, we're going to start doing a website, a, web, a new addition to the Bill Cop Animation page with, with clips from Dumb Bunny so people can help promote it. But yeah, wherever you see it, help promote it. Social media is where it's at, man. Yeah. So I, I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to be able to. Uh, uh, you know, see your journey that you've done, dude. It's so badass. I'm, I'm an honor to see you. Well, I'm not done yet. I'm, I'm close, but I'm not done yet. Yeah. No, I really love doing this stuff, and it's just good to be able to make cartoons without anybody telling you what to do. Thank you. Is there anything else you're doing besides this right now? Anything else you got planned for the future? This is pretty much this it. Is I mean, it, baby. we've got, well, we have Little Dead Riding Hood, which we're pitching to Shudder to do a, a half hour special. Ooh. So that That'll should be, be fun. fun. Yeah, that was cool. from a, a book I did a while back. Sweet. Yeah, I'll yeah. check that one out. Well, thank you so much, Bill Cop, for spending some time out of your day to, My to go over. I thank you so much. For Bill Cop, I am Heartthrob Rob. We'll get it. <laughs> and if you like what you're watching, then hop in the coffin. Follow us on social media at Coffin Radio. Coffin is spelled a K. And that's all for today. K-S-S-R. Coffin Radio.